Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to WWE 2K16. And it is the first week of January, and the next pay per view is the Royal Rumble, which might be our fast track onto WrestleMania to take on Brock Lesnar for the World Heavyweight title. Not exactly sure what's going to happen. We uh, missed the Royal Rumble the last time we came through this way. But we are in a rivalry with Roman Reigns, and the authority in our current match with Daniel Bryan want us to get through with green body health. Not sure if we're going to be able to pull that off, but... I mean, we can give it a shot. Now, where is Sheamus here on the... Or not Sheamus. Roman Reigns is fighting Sheamus. Where is Roman here in the rankings? Ooh, hey, number two contender, huh? Well, I think it's good to go ahead and... Mid-match. Let's do the mid-match. We haven't done mid-match interference in a really long time. We're going to support Shamo. How the tables have turned. And then we'll have our match with Daniel Bryan and we'll see what happens there. But we'll turn off the entrances. Let these two guys go about their business. Uh, I can't believe that I'm in a match with Roman Reigns. <laughs> or in a feud with Roman Reigns. A lot of people are uh, already preparing themselves for the payback pay-per-view. They know for a fact that AJ Styles isn't winning. Um, they want to give Roman a really a nice long title reign, at least until... Um, oh, when is it? At least until SummerSlam, at the very least, which is a shame. So I've got an exit gauge here. We only did this once, and the ref was having none of it right off the bat. So we need to uh, help on. Take control, leave match, distract Roman Reigns, distract Sheamus. Cheer for an object distraction, pin breakup, distract referee. Hmm. Well, we'll go ahead and leave that on. We'll go ahead and cheer. Yay, Sheamus. Boo, Roman. This is one of those matches that the crowd, depending on the city that we'd be in, they would have absolutely none of it. There, uh, In would come the CM Punk chance, the Nakamura chance, maybe a wave, a beach ball. <laughs> no telling. Sheamus already going for a pin. We'll wait until Roman gets a bit of an advantage, and then we'll go ahead and distract him. We're going to try and play this a lot like the computer. We're not going to um, show our hand too quickly, because we know that the ref can uh, take us out fairly fast. So I don't know. There's been a lot of questions about... A lot of people were hoping for a Bullet Club reunion with um, Gallows and Anderson joining up with either AJ or Finn. Uh, Solid Monster from the Solid Monster Sounds Off podcast actually brought up the idea of Anderson and Gallows joining Roman Reigns and forming the Roman Empire, which would be very interesting. I know that's already been discussed with, like, the Usos, because it makes sense, because the Usos, quite frankly, are booed just in the same manner as Roman Reigns is. Not because they're Samoan and not because of their work rate, though in Reigns' case, that's that's probably an issue. I think the Usos are incredibly good athletes, and I like watching their matches. It's just they have no personality. They don't get to cut promos. They don't get to show off more of their, per, you know, more of what makes them tick. And you can see the Usos, um, like, on Total Divas, which I haven't watched, so I don't know. But I've also seen them on uh, Xavier Woods' Up, Up, Down, Down channel. And they've got a lot of charisma. They've got a lot of personality. But we don't get to see that on TV. They're just your typical smiley good guys. The fact of the matter is, and it's sad to say, the Rockers don't work anymore. That, that, kind, of, that kind of tag team that's just, just there. Come on, Seamus. Yay. <laughs> Actually, I haven't checked who replaced me as IC champion when I moved on to the World Heavyweight. If I did, I completely forgot. 
Let's go ahead and uh, distract Roman here. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Why does Sheamus, or excuse me, why does Roman already have a signature? That made no sense. Oh, there's the white noise. I think that was also known as the Emerald Erosion in Japan. Mitsuhama. I, I think that's how you say it, or Mitsu. He was the he was an extremely good wrestler. He was one of the uh, oh crap. Um, let's go ahead and drop down. I'm not going to try and distract the referee. Shamo kick, kicked out of the uh, Superman punch. L2 for a pin breakup. Oh, hey, how you doing? That was weird. Hmm. Let's go ahead and distract uh, Roman if he goes for the spear. What you did? Oh, he went for the drive-by. Oh, he considers that a finisher. That's interesting. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's not going to let me... No! No! And that caused absolutely nothing on my exit gauge. That's weird. Okay, Shamo, you've got a bro kick ready to go. Um, I'll go ahead and distract Roman again. Nice neck breaker. I hate this because I'm dependent on other people. He's signaling for the bro kick. Nice. Yay, cheer. Of course not, both of them are too low. Sheamus still has a lot more life than Roman though, so we need to uh, at least look at that. The commentators would be going off on Marcus right now for getting involved. It's okay though. But I think a Roman Empire and have it with the Samoans it makes more sense than having Gallows and Anderson join Roman Reigns. There's no point to it. Especially they don't... How is Ambrose going to fit into it? Um, there's, there's a lot that can be done. I know that if they're really wanting someone to replace... Not replace Roman, but take the title for Roman and have a nice run. Give it to Ambrose or Seth Rollins when he comes back. You could... It, depending on when Seth comes back... You could have that that match that all of us had wanted to see at SummerSlam. I don't mind it not being at WrestleMania. I'd like it at one of the the big four pay per views, and that's Reigns versus Rollins versus Ambrose, the triple threat match with the original Shield members, or just the Shield members. I think that would be awesome because everyone would cheer for Rollins and uh, Dean and just boo the crap out of Roman. Let's, uh, our gauge is a little bit higher. Hey, what's going on, man? We're in a feud, you know. That's what I hear. And he's got a signature as well. And now Shamo has one as two. Oh, crap. Yeah, like I'd see Roman Reigns do a dragon screw leg whip. Please. I think he's... Is he going to go for the pin? or Yeah, he is. Ah, Shamo will kick out of that. That's fine. I know enough about the AI of this game to um, know for a fact when they're going to kick out and when they're not. And they're definitely dull. Oh. No, 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 no. Did not mean to do that. Still need to get these controls. Settled. I think we're going to distract Roman one more time. How's it going? 
Shamo, some white noise here would not go amiss. Oh, went for that neck breaker again. They're about they're equal now. Oh, he's got the brogue. Yay, go for that pin. Huzzah! Oh, Roman. Boo that man. Now, it'd probably be a good time for a foreign object distraction. But I'll wait until Roman gets the, uh, gets the upper hand again. And Sheamus, I don't know what they're going to do with Sheamus. From how I understand, they're breaking up the League of Nations already. So that was an absolute... Um, oh, crap. I pressed the wrong button. I am grabbing a foreign object. There you go, ref. Good belly to belly. Overhead, belly to belly. So what are they going to do with Sheamus and Rusev and Del Rio? I, that, that faction just kind of brought them together for little to no reason. That whole, oh, they're the four horsemen, and now they're already broke up. Apparently, Wade Barrett leaving was the beginning of the end. It's, it's just a shame. Nice. Very nice full Nelson slam. Finish with an elbow drop. Old school. Huzzah. That's kind of embarrassing for Roman to lose that way. <laughs> and we didn't get booted from the uh, match. So we started to get a hang of that whole interference process. Yeah, we don't care about their highlights. It'd be interesting if I all of a sudden uh, had a tag team with Shamo. Now, I wonder if this is going to warrant some an interview segment with Renee. Or we're going to go right to our match. Let's see. Otherwise, we're going to have our work cut out for us. Welcome back to the show. This is my guest tonight. Let's talk about Shamo. No, let's not talk about Shamo. It seems like you two are getting along. Could this be a formation of a new tag team? No. I've heard the rumors, but that is just not the case right now. Oh, that didn't. Oh, I went up for respectful. Well, that's fine. At least, uh. I don't have to worry about Seamus coming in and causing all kinds of havoc again. I did that to screw over Roman. Thanks for the time. Back to you. Couldn't care less about Shamo. I think uh, the thing about it is with Rusev and Del Rio, Del Rio could just go back to his Mexican aristocrat gimmick because that was great bring back Ricardo for God's sake I mean if you're gonna if you're gonna have Del Rio in your fed go all the way with him um and just change his finisher because that double stomp is atrocious now Rusev Rusev can just go back with Lana the thing is that the roster is so there's so many people on the roster right now they really need to uh rock out that brand extension they really do because that gives everyone else a chance to shine, I think. And it'd be more of a reason to watch SmackDown. I have no interest in watching SmackDown if you're going to see the same people from Raw. One thing I've been thinking about over the last bit, especially with uh, Finn Balor just doing an interview segment on NXT, was I remember back in the 80s, if you just watched like WWF superstars, you didn't see every... It was an hour-long show. You didn't get a chance to see everyone every week and while that y your first initial thought of that is well that kind of sucks another part of that is good because absence makes the heart grow fonder and familiarity breeds contempt and I think that's the case with a lot of wrestlers and a lot of storylines right now in the WWE is 
We see them all the time, especially if they do, if they're on SmackDown twice a week. Like you you need a break from certain characters. So having them having them just be on one show a week at the very most is good, I think. You didn't see Hulk Hogan all the time. You didn't see Andre the Giant or Jake the Snake Roberts. You saw them like every so often and because of that it was an event it was something that you wanted to see because otherwise it's just hey it's a you know a Roman Reigns match and you're like okay well he does the same moves every every match there's no reason to really see him and I'm sorry that I'm kind of ragging on Roman I'm kind of upset because plans have gone kind of awry in the WWE um, if you guys haven't heard, there was an unfortunate incident at a house show in Italy. It was the first stop in their European uh, tour. Bray Wyatt apparently really messed up his leg. And it looks like all of this stuff that they've been planning um, with Bray has apparently gone boom. And it was a freak accident. I've seen the video. He was just walking. He just He just stepped wrong. And that was that. And that sucks because that reminds me of when Kevin Nash uh, tore his quad just walking across the ring. Just sometimes there are those things that just happen out of nowhere that you can't you can't expect. And unfortunately, that happened to Bray like right before he was about to have some sort of angle with uh, Reigns, and he was starting to get that babyface push. So, I I don't know. I hope it's not as bad as it kind of came out to be on the websites and whatnot. WWE has stayed kind of quiet about it. And I feel bad because Bray's had, I mean, he just had his grandfather die. And now this, like right in the middle of a push, that's, I feel bad for him. Because I've seen Wyndham Rotunda online on his sister's YouTube channel. I think I've said this before in a previous episode. And in a few interviews out of character, he seems like a lovely guy. Just just a nice nice dude that you'd want to hang out with, eat barbecue, and just talk to. So, that seems to be the case, unfortunately. Now, we're hitting the bow down. We're not going for the pin. Um, can we? Yeah. Let's see how that feels, Brian. Yes. I don't I don't care if you can get out of it. I know it's your move. And the rope break makes sense in the as far as the match goes. But I just don't want to deal with any of your shenanigans. Oh crap. This is where it all goes wrong. Whoop. No, sir. I'm gonna wait until that comeback meter drops down to nil. The fans don't get what they want, not in Marcus's case. There we are. You calmed down yet? I'm ready to give you my full attention. Uh oh. Well, that was new. Never see D. Bry go for a move like that before. We're still full up. Everything is is green. Everything is awesome. That's actually kind of sad watching Daniel Bryan hold his head like it's injured. Good Saito suplex. Let's pose, get our momentum up. And we should be good to go. Oh, kick to the head. That's unfortunate. And one more shoulder block outside. I have to say in terms of Daniel Bryan, the coolest thing I have ever seen in a Daniel Bryan match, one of the best Daniel Bryan matches I ever saw, was Daniel Bryan against Bray Wyatt at the Royal Rumble. I think this was in 2013, I think. Don't, don't quote me on that. 2014? But he had an amazing match with Bray, and it ended with uh, Daniel going for... Well, let's see if we, if he, is he going to reverse it? No, he's not going to reverse it. 
Holy crap. Nice. With the blood. Oh, I thought I was... Okay. Pin, pin, pin. Pin, pin. Get in position there, ref. Of course not. So, Gila shenanigans it is. But he went for a suicide dive on Bray. He was in his ba fiery babyface comeback mode. And Bray caught him and hit him with Sister Abigail. Like, ooh, look at that. I liked that. That was a good reversal. Now let's get that trash out of here. Let's hit the Regal Cutter. Oh, he's going to reverse everything now. Of course he is. But so am I. Face Buster? No arm drag. Oh, I'm out of reversals. Oh, no! And I can't roll out of the ring. No! This is where it all goes wrong. There's the kicks. Well, shame, shame, shame. Yeah. Authorities are going to be upset now. And a boot to the head. Thank you, Lana, very much for that distraction. And that was the end of the match. I like when they end when they have those really big matches, and there's just those matches out of nowhere. There are those moves out of nowhere, and that ends the match. Sometimes you can go too far with that. You can just have people kicking out of spectacular move, out of spectacular move. Um, a prime example of this would be Bailey versus Sasha at Takeover Brooklyn. I think it was where they had that amazing um, top rope Hurricane Rana. In my opinion, that should have ended the match, but they went, they kept going. It, it just, there's, a, there's some matches that would end it on a high point, you know what I mean? And that match did not end on a high point, but it's okay. Cheat to win. Win to cheat. That was actually a really good match. We have not had a bad match with Daniel Bryan. Like, they've all been legit matches that... I think people would want to watch. I know, the authority is not happy. Am I about to have a talk with Renee? I think maybe. We'll have to. Yep. Please join me in welcoming my guest tonight. Let's talk about what happened out there tonight. It feels like the authority is very displeased with you. What are your thoughts on that? I'll tell you what. I'll. I'll. Triple H can go out there and not lose body health fighting Daniel Bryan. I'm glad they hate me. Yeah, we'll do the typical. I know. I know. I would first like to apologize to I don't see how that's considered egotistical, though. Because our egotistical score just went up for being apologetic to the authority. I, I, don't, I don't get that. There you have it. Back to you, Cole. But the authority know that I am very, very sorry for failing against the goat. I'm still really, really sad about Daniel Bryan's injury because I just think about that. Just, just think. Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles against Cesaro again. Daniel Bryan against Kevin Owens. Daniel Bryan against Sami Zayn. Daniel Bryan against Nakamura. Just, ah, oh, it is shameful. It's probably one of the saddest things to happen in wrestling in quite some time, really, in just the sheer potential of good stuff on the horizon. Reverse your opponent's signature. That's relative. Oh, holy crap, the authority is not pleased with me. Our way back up. And we will start doing that in the next episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, go ahead and click like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And be sure to check out the series on Tuesday where I'll give my Raw recap and continue Marcus Prince's journey to the World Championship. Later days, everyone.